Hello everyone, this is Babita, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of ECE at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, I am going to explain about the power amplifiers in that class A and class B amplifiers. So while coming to the contents here, I am going to explain about what is mean by power amplifier and what are the different uh, classifications of power amplifier and in that we are going to see about class A power amplifier as well as class B power amplifier. In the class A power amplifier, again we are having two types, series fed class A amplifier and transformer coupled class A amplifier. And similarly, in the case of class B amplifier also, we are having two types, push-pull class B amplifier as well as complementary push-pull class B power amplifier. So before going to the classification of power amplifier, first of all, what is mean by power amplifier and why we are moving for the power amplifier, even though we are having the voltage amplifiers and current amplifiers, that is nothing but normal single stage amplifiers. See, in the case of uh, voltage and power amplifiers or normal voltage amplifiers, the voltage level it can provide is to some extent only. So what is the output we are getting from that voltage amplifiers, we cannot utilize for all the practical applications. For example, if you take any loudspeaker uh, loudspeaker as our application, in order to run that loudspeaker, what is the signal we are getting from the normal amplifier or voltage amplifier is not sufficient. So high level or high power signal is required to run the loudspeaker here. So that's why in order to get the sufficient power to run the loudspeaker circuit, we are going for the power amplifier, not only loudspeaker. For example, I am telling here it as the loudspeaker. In order to run some practical applications, we are going for the power amplifiers. And in the case of power amplifiers, we are having a number of multiple stages of amplifiers in order to get the high power at the output so that these particular stages of amplifiers will amplify the applied weak signal and across the final output we will get the high power as the output and in the case of power amplifier though it is a multi-stage amplifier power amplifier is also a multi-stage amplifier so in that multi-stage amplifier the first few stages are the voltage amplifiers only. There is nothing but we will take some two or three stages of voltage amplifiers in order to amplify the given peak signal. Okay, but always the last stage is designed to provide the maximum power here. So the final stage is known as power stage or power amplifier. So the early stages or the first stages what we are taking here at here it as the voltage level of this signal. Those amplifiers are meant to set the voltage level of the signal, and but the final stage is meant for set the power level of the signal. So in this session, we are concentrating about the power amplifier, but because we already discussed about all the multi-stage amplifiers in terms of voltage and current. So this is the diagram related to the power amplifier for running the application. See, from the microphone, we are providing the signal to the voltage amplifier. I have already mentioned in this case, the first few stages are the voltage amplifiers. So that's why first two stages I am taking here it as voltage amplifiers. And the last stage I am taking here it as the power amplifier. So the microphone, it is giving a very low volume of the signal and it is very weak signal. So this signal we are applying for the voltage amplifier so that it amplify the particular applied signal and that output of this first voltage amplifier we are giving back to the input for the second voltage amplifier so that again it will amplify the amplified version of the signal so that the overall gain as well as output voltage here it will be increases compared to first stage here. 
So that's why the output voltage of the second voltage amplifier is always greater than the output voltage which we are getting from the first voltage amplifier. So here uh, by using these two levels of voltage amplifier, we can able to set the voltage level of the signal. So this signal again we are giving to the input for the power amplifier. So this power amplifier will improve the power level of the signal so that we will get the high power signal across the output. So this high power signal we are giving to the loudspeaker so that it can run properly here. So this is the block diagram for power amplifier application or power amplifier stages we can say. So these uh, power amplifiers are available in two forms. One is small signal amplifiers and one more is large signal amplifiers. So what is mean by small signal amplifiers here? If any amplifier which is handling the small AC input signal, so it amplifies the small AC input signal that is in the range from some micro volts to milli volts range of signals so that these amplifiers we can call it as the small signal amplifiers. There is nothing but those are able to amplify the small level of signals. Okay, so Voltage amplifiers, whatever we discussed in the previous slide, come, comes into this particular particular small signal amplifiers here. So these uh, small signal amplifiers or voltage amplifiers are designed to operate over the linear portion of the output characteristics of the transistor which we are going to use in the amplifier circuit. And also uh, the transistor parameters those are the current gain, voltage gain, input impedance as well as output impedance. These parameters should not change when you are performing the amplification operation. Only the amplitude of the signal should change here. So such type of amplifiers are called as the voltage amplifiers. These amplifiers can able to provide the amplification with the small distortion. In the ideal case, we will take it as no distortion, but in the practical case, it will provide very little distortion along with the amplified signal. So the voltage amplifiers will come into the small signal amplifiers. And next one is the large signal amplifiers. If any amplifiers will able to amplify the voltage signals, that is few voltage range signals, not in the micro and millivolts range, it is in volts and more range of signals it can able to amplify. Those amplifiers will fall into the large signal amplifier classifications. So whatever the power amplifier are the last stage we have seen in the previous slide that comes into the large signal amplifier here. So how we are able to design this particular power amplifier means those can be able to provide a large amount of AC power output. Okay, so that can they can able to operate the output device, for example, here it has the speaker. To run that particular speaker, we require the high power output. That power, that particular power output we can able to get from the power amplifier. And power amplifier is the large signal amplifier. Okay, so the main features of this large signal amplifiers are power amplifiers or those are able to provide high efficiency and high output power across the output and those are useful for impedance matching at the output device. So generally if you are handling with one watt or more power, those particular amplifiers we can call it as the power amplifiers. That, that amplifier can able to handle the power with one watt and more, those particular amplifiers will come into the large signal amplifiers or power amplifiers. So from these small signal amplifiers and large signal amplifiers, we can say in the small signal amplifiers, the main factors or main features are it can provide the amplification and it provides the high gain and it will operate in linear region. Okay. But in the case of 
large signal amplifiers or in the power amplifiers those can able to handle large voltage levels as well as current levels so the main factors of this power amplifiers are it will mean for providing the high efficiency and can it can able to handle the high power capability and it will provide the impedance matching to the output device so these are the main factors for the power amplifiers and next what is what are the classifications of power amplifiers here? so the first classification of power amplifier is the class a power amplifier so the classification of power amplifier is depending upon how much amount of input signal we are going to take for the amplification okay the amplifier circuit can able to take how much amount of input signal depending upon that we are classifying the power amplifiers here so in that one of the classification is class a amplifier so this particular class a amplifier will conducts through the total full 360 degrees of the input signal that is nothing but if we take it as the sinusoidal signal it will take the total signal 0 to 2 pi range or 0 to 360 degrees range the total signal it will utilize for the amplification purpose so that in order to get this proper amplification and overall signal amplification we have to set the q point at the middle of the operating sorry middle of the active region or else middle of the dc load line and second classification is the class b power amplifier so in the case of class b power amplifier this particular amplifier can able to amplify only half of the applied input signal that is from 0 to 180 degrees range of signal only it can able to amplify so in order to get this particular amplification we have to maintain the operating point or q point of this class b amplifier at the cut off point of the transistor and the next classification is class ab amplifier so this class ab amplifier is the compromise between the class a amplifier as well as class b amplifiers that is nothing but the conduction range is from 180 degrees to 360 degrees why we are taking here it as 180 degrees to 360 degrees means for the class b amplifier it is 180 degrees and for the class a amplifier it is 360 degrees so between these two we will take any one angle in order to get the amplification in the class ab amplifier so to get uh, such amplification between 180 to 360 degrees we have to maintain the q point between the midpoint and the cut off region that is nothing but between the active region as well as in the cut off region we have to choose any one point to make amplification in the class ab power amplifier and the next classification is class c amplifier so this particular amplifier can able to conducts only less than 180 degrees of the applied input signal so in this level to get less than 180 degrees we have to maintain the operating point below the cut off region of the transistor and the last classification is the class d power amplifier so here we are not going to see the conduction on angle of the input signal why because this class d power amplifier is especially designed for the generation of the digital signals in order to amplify the digital signals we are going to utilize this class d amplifier so in the first classification of power amplifier that is class a power amplifier so in the class a power amplifier we are already mentioned the conduction angle is total full cycle that is 360 degrees so to get the 360 degree signal amplification we have to maintain the operating point at the middle of the dc load line that is nothing but so this is the dc load sorry these are the characteristics of the amplifier that is vc versus ic that is output voltage versus output current of the amplifier so this is the cut off region and this is the saturation region and this is the active region of the amplifier 
So to get the 360 degrees signal amplification, we have to maintain the Q point in the active region. In the active region, where we have to look at means in the midpoint of the active region, we have to maintain the Q point. Then only we can able to get the total positive half cycle as well as negative half cycle of the input signal for the amplification. So when we are providing both the half cycles, positive and negative half cycles, in the output also we can expect the amplified version of the signal across the output. So this is the signal, input signal we are going to apply for the class A power amplifier. Okay. This is V0 T. So after amplification, we are going to get the V0 signal. So DC bias level is at 0 axis and full 360 degrees output signal that is fast to cycle as well as the negative cycle. So these class A power amplifiers are of two types. One is series fit class A power amplifier and second one is transformer coupled class A power amplifier. So what is the basic difference between the series fit class A power amplifier and the transformer coupled power amplifier? So in the case of series fit class A power amplifier, the name itself indicating the load resistance connected in series with the output resistance or output terminal of the amplifier. So from there we will take the output voltage or else we will measure the output voltage. And similarly in the case of transformer coupled class A power amplifier, in the uh, coupling device we are going to use the transformer for impedance match. So this is the circuit for the class A series fit power amplifier. So for that we require the power transistor to design this particular type of series fit class A power amplifier. We require power transistor here okay. and to provide the biasing voltage for this power amplifier we are using the space resistance RB. Okay. And this collector resistance or we can also call it as load resistance is used to measure the output voltage level how much we are getting from the circuit. And also this from here we are providing the AC supply that is nothing but sinusoidal signal with full 360 degrees. And we are applying this signal through the coupling capacitor C in here. So this CN will block the DC content whatever we are providing in the AC signal. Any, any DC content which is present in this AC signal that can be blocked by the CN. So only AC signal will pass to the base of the transistor. Though this is the base collector and emitter terminal of the transistor. So once up, we are applying this particular signal to this power transistor. So this overall arrangement acts like a power amplifier here. So this signal we are applying to the base of the transistor along with the biasing voltage through the RB resistance. So that biasing voltage, how we are providing that, that biasing voltage means that transistor should operate in the active region. So once we are going for the amplification means first of all we have to operate the transistor in the active region. That is nothing but base emitter junction should be reversed, sorry, forward biased and collector to base junction should be reverse bias. So, to run this transistor in the active region, we have to provide the biasing voltages in this way. So, when you are providing the biasing voltages in this range and also you are applying the AC signal to the circuit so that it acts like an amplifier and it will provide the output across the collector resistor or across the load resistor or as the amplified version of this applied input signal. So here we can observe the graph for the input signal as well as output signal here. For that I am taking the graph between the output voltage VC versus output current IC. Why I am taking here it as VC and IC means I am taking the transistor in the common emitter configuration here that we can observe in the circuit emitter terminal is grounded so that emitter terminal acts like a common terminal between the base and collector so that we can say it is in common emitter configuration. So in the common emitter configuration 
output voltage is VC and output current is IC. So that's why we are taking the output characteristics VC versus IC. Okay. So by using this VC versus IC, we can able to draw the DC load line. Okay. IC is equal to VCC by RC and VCC equal to VC. Okay. And we have to set the operating point in the middle of the active region. So from that, we are applying the input signal to the transistor so that we can able to see both the voltage levels as well as current levels here. Why? Because this is the power amplifier by using the power transistor so that it can able to provide both the voltage output as well as current output. So that's why the voltage output we are indicated on the voltage axis here with the maximum voltage VCC and the minimum voltage is minus VCC and the middle at axis we will get it as half of the maximum voltage that is VCC by 2 and similarly in the case of current also we will get it as amplified version of the current the maximum value is VCC by RC and the mid value is of VCC by RC so these are the voltage as well as current signals we are getting from the series fed class A power amplifier and in order to draw this particular DC load line, we have to get the equations from this circuit. So the same circuit again I am considering here. Okay, the same circuit, the series fed class A power amplifier I am considering again here. In this, I am taking the input section that is nothing but input side. This A base emitter junction is the input side. Okay. And this collector emitter junction is the output side here. So from the input side and from the output side, we can able to get the points of current and voltage levels in order to draw the DC load line here. So first of all, I am applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law to the output circuit in order to get the value of current or output current IC. So, what is the expression we will get? The supply voltage VCC minus drop across this collector resistance that is IC, RC or RL. We can take anything IC into RC minus the drop across this junction collector to emitter junction that is VC. So, what is the expression actually? VCC minus IC RL minus VC is equal to 0. So, from this, if we write the VCC value, we will get it as ICRL plus VC. And this ICRL, if we write, we will get it as VCC minus VC. And from this, if we write the value of collector current IC, that is equal to VC by minus RL plus VCC by RL. So, this is the output current or collector current equation from the output circuit of the amplifier. And similarly, to find the output voltage VC, I am going to apply the KVL to the input circuit that is base to emitter circuit. This circuit for this circuit, if you apply the KVL. So, this IBQ is the current which is flowing through the base terminal of the transistor. So, how we can find this particular value? This current is nothing but the supply voltage VCC minus VBE. VBE is the base to emitter voltage or cut-in voltage of this transistor. So VCC minus VBE by the resistance which is present is single resistance that is RB. So that's why VCC minus 0.7 by RB here. Okay. And the collector current of the common emitter amplifier is beta times the IB current. So that's why I'm writing here it as ICQ is equal to beta into IBQ where beta is nothing but current amplification factor of the common emitter transistor and that is the ratio of collector current to the base current. So from that relation or to satisfy that relation only we are writing this. And the corresponding 
collector to emitter voltage VCQ is equal to VCC minus ICQ RA. From this equation, we can write. So, this one I am taking it as my first equation. Suppose in this first equation, if I am substituting Vc equal to 0, so that I can able to calculate the collector current value IC, ICQ. Whenever this one is equal to 0 means we will get ICQ equal to Vcc by R. And similarly, to find the voltage value, I am making IC equal to 0 here. If IC equal to 0 means Vc is equal to Vcc. So, these two points Ic as well as Vc values are the Q point values. And by using these points, we can able to draw this DC load line. See here, Ic value. Ic value we got here it as Vcc by Ri and Vc value is Vcc. So, that is why in the IC, we represented here it as VCC by RC and VC value we represented here it as VCC. So, these two are the points of the load line. If we draw these two points, we will get the load line. And the middle of this load line or in the active region of this load line, we have to set the operating point or Q point so that it can able to utilize the total 360 degrees of the applied input signal and it will provide the proper amplification for the voltage signal as well as for the current signal. So again now by using output characteristics I have mentioned the voltage and current levels here. In the previous case only we have taken the load line and output signals but here I am taking the output characteristics on that output characteristics. I have indicated the DC load line with the same processor with the current VCC by RA and with the voltage is VCC. So here the output voltage is this much we are getting this particular waveform is the output voltage waveform and this is the current waveform. So both the voltage and current levels of the signal are increasing here by using this series fed class E power amplifier. And how much efficiency we are getting from this power amplifier? To calculate that, first of all, I am taking maximum collector to emitter voltage. Already we have calculated, we got here it as VCC. And the maximum collector peak to peak voltage, that is VCC by RL, this one also we have calculated. Okay, so from this, we can able to find the maximum AC output power. Why we are calculating the maximum AC output power means in order to find the efficiency, we require the AC power as well as DC power for the circuit. So that's why I'm calculating the AC output power PO max is equal to VC voltage into IC current divided by 8. So VC peak to peak value is VCC and IC peak to peak value is VCC by RC. So the total value is VCC square by 8RC is the AC power from the circuit. And similarly, how much DC power is applied to the circuit? That is PDC. That is nothing but current as well as voltage levels from the circuit. That is VCC into IC. The VCC value is VCC only, but the IC value we are getting here it as VCC by 2RC. So that the DC power we are getting here it as VCC square by so now substitute this AC power as well as DC power in the efficiency equation. That is PO max by PDC into 100. PO maximum is nothing but maximum AC output power. So that is VCC square by 8RC divided by VCC square by 2RC. So this one, this one will get cancelled and RC, RC will also get cancelled and 2, 4 job. So, we will get here it as 25% after simplification. We are getting here it as efficiency 25%. So, the class A, from the class A power amplifier, efficiency level is very, very poor. Only we can able to achieve 25% of the efficiency only. So, because of this reason, class A power amplifiers mostly will not prefer for 
practical applications. So, while coming to the advantages of this Class A power amplifier, this circuit is uh, very simple and we can easily implement. Why? Because it requires only one transistor and two or more resistances. And uh, the load resistance is directly connected to the collector circuit. So, output transformer is not required here in order to uh, make the impedance match. And Though we are not using the transformer in the circuit, it will be less cost and uh, less number of components are required. Why? Because load we are directly coupled to the circuit. So these are the advantages of the class A power amplifier. But along with this, we are having some disadvantages. Those are the load is directly connected to the collector circuit. So because of connecting the load directly to the collector circuit means there is a variation in the collector current or recent current. So once the variation in the collector current is occurring in the circuit means there is a variation in the Q point as well as there is a wastage of power in the circuit. And power dissipation also more in the circuit. So in order to reduce this extra heat sinks are, used, are required in the circuit. And uh, the output impedance of this circuit is very high. So, because of providing very high impedance, we cannot use for the low impedance loads such as loudspeakers. The efficiency is very poor due to the large power dissipation in the circuit. So, these are the disadvantages of the power amplifier. So, here the heat sinks are used to reduce the power dissipation or heat generated from the circuit. And next uh, classification of the class A power amplifier is transformer coupled class A power amplifier. I have already mentioned these class A power amplifiers we can utilize for the series fed class A amplifier or transformer coupled trans transformer coupled class A power amplifier. And in, among these two, we will prefer mostly the transformer coupled power amplifier. Why? Because it will provide excellent impedance match in between the load and the uh, uh, circuit, whatever we are using here and DC power loss is also very small in this case. Why DC power loss is very small means the resistance offered by the transformer primary winding is very less so that's why power loss is also very less. So these two are the advantages of the transformer coupled amplifier compared to the series fit class A power amplifier. It is can able to provide the impedance matching and it can reduce the power loss. And this is the circuit for the transformer coupled class A power amplifier. So, in the previous circuit, we have used the resistor directly here to take the output. But here, in order to take the output, we are using the transformer. So, remaining circuit is similar to the series fit class A power amplifier only. And also, to provide the biasing, there we have used the fixed bias circuit. But here we are using the voltage divider biasing circuit. So that's why in for the base terminal of the transistor, we are connecting both the resistances R1 and R2 to provide the biasing, required biasing voltage for the power transistor. And emitter transistor for the emitter terminal and C, the C capacitor is used to bypass the noise which is generated in the circuit. And it will provide the path for the amplified signal. And here we will apply the AC signal with a 360 degrees angle. Okay, this AC signal through the coupling capacitor scene we are applying to the base of the transistor Q. And the output we were taking across the collector of the transistor, but that collector is connected to the transformer heat. And while coming to the output, if you take the series fed class A amplifier and transformer coupled amplifier, the output is same here. We are able to increase the voltage level as well as the current level of the circuit here. So the extra element which are adding in the transformer coupled class A amplifier is transformer. So we are going to see the action of the transformer here. So, why we are using this transformer in the collector circuit of the transistor, sorry, collector circuit of the amplifier means for impedance matching. 
So here RL is the load resistance of the secondary winding of the transformer. And RL dash is the impedance or resistance which is reflected from secondary to primary here. Okay, this RL is reflecting back as RL dash in the primary winding of the transformer. Okay, so this is the reflected resistance RL dash or input impedance RL dash. And the number of turns in the primary we are taking here it as N1 and the number of turns in the secondary we are taking here it as N2. And V1 is the voltage which is flowing in the primary winding and V2 is the voltage which is flowing in the secondary winding. And similarly the I1 current which is flowing in the primary winding and I2 current which is flowing in the secondary winding. So that end all we represented in the step down transformer. So the function of the step down transformer means it will reduce the applied voltage to 9 to 15 voltage range. So here we are taking the turns ratio and voltage relation of the transformer that is V1 by V2 equal to N1 by N2 or else if you take in terms of current I2 by I1 equal to N1 by N2. So from this I can write V1 by I1 equal to N1 by N2 whole square into V2 by I2. From these two relations, I can write voltage to current ratio. But this voltage to current ratio is nothing but the resistance. If you are taking here it as RL, that is the input resistance. If you are taking here it as RL, sorry, RL dash, it is the input resistance. And if you are taking here it as output voltage to output current, so that it is the output resistance. Why? Because V1, I1 are the input parameters, V2, I2 are the output parameters. So that I am writing the RL dash effective input impedance is nothing but N1 by N2 whole square into RL. Why? Because this V1 by I1 is nothing but RL dash and this turns ratio is as it is and V2 by I2 is nothing but RL. So where N is nothing but number of turns in primary to the number of turns in the secondary. So from the circuit we can say the power loss in the primary is negligible. We are already mentioned that power loss is very less here. So why? Because the resistance is very small here. So the input power under DC condition we will get it as P in DC equal to VCC into IC voltage and current. And if you want to find the RMS voltage as well as RMS current, that is 1 by root of maximum voltage minus minimum voltage divided by 2. So that we will get it as VCC by root 2. Similarly, for the current also, we can calculate this one it as ICQ by root 2. So these two values, VRMS and IRMS, to calculate the AC power, we are taking. So the AC power is the multiplication of RMS voltage and RMS current. So after multiplying that, we will get it as VCC into IC by 2. So the collector efficiency or efficiency of the transformer coupled amplifier is AC power by DC power. So AC power we got here it as VCC into IC by 2. DC power is VCC into IC. So after cancelling these parameters, we will get it as 1 by 2. So, if we write in terms of percentage, we will get it as 50%. So, by using transformer coupled amplifier, we can improve the efficiency up to 50%. In the previous circuit, we got here it as 25%. So, advantages of uh, this transformer coupled class A amplifier, there is uh, no power loss in the circuit and it is useful for impedance matching. And it will provide very high gain and DC isolation is provided between the stages. While coming to the disadvantages, uh, for low frequency signals, the amplification is less here. And hum noise is introduced by the transformer. Because of using the transformer, we are getting the noise in the circuit. And the transform we are using the transformer. The transformer is bulky and costly. And the frequency response is also less here very good. So this uh, type of circuits 
wherever we are going to use is for implants matching in the main circuits and uh, generally for the driver circuits for the driver circuits we can utilize it as the output amplifier so these are the applications of the transformer coupled amplifier and the next uh, type of amplifier is the class b power amplifier so in the case of a class b power amplifier these class b power amplifiers are classified into two types again complementary class b power amplifier and the push pull complementary power amplifier so in this case we have to choose the operating point to be at the cutoff region so the only positive half cycle is amplified at the output so in this session we discuss what is meant by power amplifier and what are the classifications of the power amplifiers and in that we discuss the first classification that is class a power amplifier Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.